In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this drop-down navigation with Flexbox. Let's get started. So to get started, I'm opening up a CodePen project. At the top of the HTML, I already have a head tag with a link to the font family I'm going to use for this project. And then beneath that, I have body tags, which are empty. So to get started, I'm going to go inside of the body tags of the HTML. And the first element I'm going to add to this page is a nav element with a class of nav. This element will hold the entire navigation bar. Now, within this nav element, I'm first going to create an unordered list that will hold the original list items at the top. And then I'm also going to nest other unordered list within it. So that way it can have a drop down feature. So here I'm going to create an unordered list with a class of nav list. And so this unordered list will contain several list items. The first list item will actually be the logo for this company. So beneath this, I'm going to add a list item and I'm going to give it a class of nav list logo. And that's because I'm going to want this element to behave differently than the other nav items on the page. So this one is going to get the class of nav list logo and the other ones will get a different class name. So within here, I'm just going to copy and paste the SVG for the logo. Next, I'm going to add several other list items. So I'm going to add three other list items, each with a class of nav list item. So here I'm going to add a list item with that class and I'm going to multiply that by three. So the first element will be about, the next one will be work, and the third one will be contact. Now within some of these elements, I'm going to want to include a drop down menu so the user can click on a particular page. So for the about section, I'm actually going to include an unordered list within this element and I'm going to give it a class of nav list item drop to represent that it is the drop down menu. And within this list, I'm going to contain three list items. Next, I'm going to do a very similar thing for the work element. So beneath this, I'm also going to add an unordered list with the same class. And here I'm going to add two list items. For the contact element, I'm going to leave it as it is, and I'm not going to contain a drop down menu here. So we can see that within our design, we have a main list, and then we have a sub list of a few items beneath that. So we are going to take advantage of this structure to create this navigation bar within the CSS. So next I'm going to jump inside of the CSS for the project. Now I like to add SCSS as a preprocessor here which allows me to nest CSS elements and also declare variables. And that will help keep the code really organized for the project. This design contains list items at different levels. There's this list item, and then there's these kinds of list items. And I want them to behave differently. So I really like using SCSS because it will allow me to keep the code really organized and refer to which particular list item I want to. So first within my CSS, I like to declare variables that I'm going to use throughout the project. So I'm going to copy and paste those variables in. And beneath that, I like to add some basic styling that I add to every project. I like to set the box sizing set to border box and a margin and padding set to zero universally. So next I'm going to work on the actual style for this project. So first I'm going to reference the body tag and I'm just going to set it to the font family that I declared in the header. Next, I'm going to work on the navigation bar. So first I'm going to reference the class of nav, which again holds the entire element. And I'm going to set the position of it to fixed with a width of 100% of the viewport width. And then to define it a bit more, I'm going to add a box shadow zero pixels in the X and Y direction, 10 pixels blur and a light gray. So now we can see this element is a bit more defined. Next, I'm going to work on the nav list. 
So that contains the about, work, contact, and the logo. And so here I'm going to say and list, and I'm going to set the display set to flex with a justify content set to flex end because I want most of the information to be on the right side of the page. I'm also going to align the items in the center. I'm going to add a gap of two REM between the elements and also a margin top and bottom of zero REM left and right of two REM. Next, I'm going to work on this logo. So beneath this, I'm going to write and logo and I'm going to set the list style to none and to move its placement on the page, I'm going to set the margin right to auto, which will push it all the way to the left side of the page. And to make it appear interactive, I'm going to set the cursor to pointer. Next, I'm going to style the SVG within this logo. So here I'm going to reference the SVG and I'm going to change the width to 2.5 REM. And I know I'm going to want to change the color of it when this is in the hover state. So I'm also going to add a transition of the fill property in 250 milliseconds with an ease in. And then I'm going to add a hover and a focus state, and I'm just going to change the fill of it to the primary color. So now if I hover over that element, it changes color. Great. So the next thing I want to do is modify the about work and contact elements. So beneath this, I'm going to write and item to reference the class of nav list item. And for these elements, I'm going to set the list style to none. I'm going to increase the font weight to bold. I'm going to make the position of these elements relative. And that's because I'm going to use position absolute later on. I'm going to add some padding around it of 1.5 REM in the top and bottom, one REM left and right. And I'm also going to set the cursor to pointer so it's clear that this element is interactive. Next, I'm going to work on the drop down menu. So right now these list items are visible, but I only want it to be visible when the user hovers over the particular element. So if the user is above about, then I want to see our team, our process and history. So by default, I don't want these elements to be visible on the page. So if we go back to the HTML, we have this list item that says about, and then within that I have an unordered list with a class of nav list item drop. So these are the elements I'm going to work on next. So within here, I'm going to write and drop. And for these elements, I want full control over their placement on the page. So I'm going to set the position to absolute. I'm going to set the top to four REM with the left of negative one REM. To define this area a bit more, I'm going to add a box shadow, zero pixels in the X and Y direction, a 10 pixel blur, and a light gray color. And I'm going to set the background color to white. I'm going to add a border radius. I'm going to specify the width to 12 REM and add a padding of one REM. For the elements within here, I'm going to also set the display set to flex with a flex direction set to column and a gap of 0.5 REM. So these elements are starting to look a bit better. Next, I'm going to apply style to these list items. So within this class of drop, I'm going to reference the list items and I'm going to set the list style to none, a padding of 0.5 REM and one REM. I'm going to apply the same border radius. And then I know I'm going to want to modify the background color in the hover state. So I'm going to add a transition here for the background color in 200 milliseconds with an ease in out curve. And then I'm also going to apply a hover and a focus state, and I'm going to modify the background color for this element. So now if I go on top of these elements, we can see that the background color changes. Now, initially, I don't want these elements to be visible. I only want it to be visible when the user is on top of this parent element. So I need to modify its visibility on the page. So going back over here underneath that drop element, I'm going to add a few properties. 
First, I'm going to set the opacity to zero and the visibility to hidden. And then I'm also going to apply a transition because I want this element to fade into place. So I'm going to add a transition of the opacity property that will take place in 200 milliseconds with an ease in out curve. So now if I go on top of this element, we still don't see that drop down, and it's because we need to add hover effects for these elements. So going back up under this item, we're going to add a hover state so that way this element will become visible again. So beneath this, I'm going to add a hover and a focus state as well. So when this element is in the hover or the focus state, I want that drop down to become visible. So beneath this, I'm going to set the opacity to one and the visibility set to visible. So now I'm expecting that when I go on top of the about or work, we will see that drop down menu. So I go over it and now we can actually see this drop down menu. So the last thing I want to do is add hover states for the about, work, and contact to add a little bit more emphasis to these elements. So underneath that item, I'm going to add an after pseudo element. And if you're fairly new to pseudo elements, I have an entire playlist that goes over different ways that I've used pseudo elements in the past. So I'll link that playlist in the description below. So here I'm going to write and after, and you always need to include a content tag, even if it's empty. So I'm going to include a content tag of an empty string. I'm going to set the width to zero initially because I only want this to be visible in the hover state. I'm going to add a height of 0.3 REM with the border radius set to the radius variable. I'm going to set the position of this element to absolute with a left position and a bottom position. I'm also going to set the background color to the primary color in the project. And I want this to transition the width of it in 200 milliseconds with an ease in curve. Now we currently don't see anything on the page and that's because that width is set to zero. But if I change it to 80%, which means 80% of the parent element, we will now see this line on the page. So I want this to animate in when this element is in the hover state. So I'm going to switch this back to zero and I'm going to add a hover state. So beneath this, I'm going to write and hover, and then I'm going to modify the after property. And so then I'm going to set the width to 80%. So now if I'm on top of the element, we see the drop down and we also see the line underneath that list item. So there you go. That's how I created this drop down navigation with Flexbox. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.